Hi, I'm Landon with Magic Spiral Productions. In our last video, I discussed the different ways that we can use a 4-track creatively. So in this video, I want to talk about how you approach buying a 4-track, and I'd like to provide some insight into what you should expect to encounter once you have one. Unless you're inheriting a 4-track, or you found a great deal on one, the first thing you want to consider doing is comparing the features and options of the different models within your price range. I picked up this Tascam 424 because it has individual outputs for each track, and it also has tape speed options, unlike my 414. Half the battle is finding out exactly what your needs are, and sometimes the only way to know what your needs are is to just dive in and take the plunge. The 4-track is no longer in production, so working parts become more scarce over time. The increasing value within the collector's market and popularity amongst hipsters means that finding a 4-track in pristine condition will likely be accompanied with a premium price tag. Unless you have the confidence that you can get inside to do some minor repairs, you're going to want to make sure the machine you're buying is tested and in working condition. The 4-track uses specialized tape heads that are designed to be used with high bias type 2 cassettes, like the Maxell XL2. Try not to use a tape length longer than 90 minutes in your 4-track, because longer tape is thinner and more brittle, which can cause you some unwanted problems. Generally, in order to find out how much recording time you're going to get on a cassette, is you divide the tape duration by 4. For example, this tape is 90 minutes, but divided by 4 is only 22 and a half minutes of recording time. The reasons for this is that the 4-track runs twice as fast as a regular cassette deck in order to increase sound quality. because you're using all four of the tracks which would otherwise be used for stereo left and right for both sides. This does mean that only one side can be played in a forward direction. Concerning price, I've been lucky and found sealed type 2 cassette tapes at thrift stores for 50 cents or a dollar, but I've also spent up to five dollars for them a piece online. Um, type 4 cassettes or other specialized cassettes can run you a premium. An essential part of recording is staying organized. I do this by giving my cassettes unique names and labeling the information in the booklet, what the tracks are for each song and the day the tape was completed. I have adapted these extra steps as part of my recording process and I would encourage you to as well. I also find it helps to designate a specific purpose to a cassette before recording to it. Once you have an idea of what the finished tape is going to be, it's time to set up your tape machine. You'll need to commit to a few decisions before you press record. Will the tape use noise reduction? Are we dedicating any stereo tracks? What tape speed is zero? These are some things to consider when committing to tape. They help me to stay organized, which I find very important in my process. The nature of the analog beast is that parts age and go wrong, but with proper care and maintenance, these will last you endless hours of recording time. The most common problem with broken tape machines is that the tape transport won't work because the belt inside is broken. This is a relatively simple repair job, and I've repaired a few myself. You can purchase replacement belts easily online, but make sure you're getting the right size for your model. You may plug in an instrument only to have the sound cut in and out as the jack moves around. This is likely a loose solder joint, and an easy fix if you know how to use a soldering iron. It could also just be a dirty input, and a cleaning solution like Detoxit will clean it out, as well as those scratchy pots. Sometimes the knobs just need a good massage, and hopefully you don't need to get inside and deep clean or replace the contacts. Let's face it, these things are made out of plastic. I was moving and I broke the door off of this one. Um, knobs can fall off and faders, and some of these can be replaced easily online, but 
a common problem to be aware of nonetheless. Ultimately, you can avoid many problems, like tape dropouts, if you use the recommended Type 2 cassettes. And if you keep your tape heads clean with cotton swabs and rubbing alcohol, or other recommended cleaning solution. Demagnetizers are relatively cheap online, although I have yet to have experience using them. Well, I hope this video has been encouraging and helpful for you. If you think I've left anything out, please leave your questions in the comments section, and I'll be happy to address those in the future videos. I'm Landon with Magic Spiral Productions, and happy recording.